Oh yeah, get dumped. Get dumped. You, you're That's what I say. <laughs> get dumped. Dan, get what? dumped. Get dumped. What does that mean? You're trying to screw around with my intro. No, no. That's go on, go over on. with. It's always we have really a good. very special show today yeah. on the voicemail dump truck. It's uh, it's Thursday. It's January 12th. We are joined by our very special guest, Emily Panic, is here on the program today. What's going on, Emily? I'm chilling, man. I'm ready to, to get dumping. Emily, what's your experience with dump trucks? Uh, honestly, none to speak of. Thank you so okay. much for asking. You're quite welcome. Well, look, that's, that's the best kind of guest, okay? Best kind of guest who has no dump experience whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, today we will also be dumping with uh, Dan Reichert. Hello, Dan Reichert. Dan Reichert had to butt his stupid face into my intro, but we'll let him have the floor for a second. What's up, Dan? Oh, your shit's broken? Sorry. Sucks to suck. Jan Ochoa, how's it going, pal? Riding shotgun. Uh, I'm I'm still on the monster truck train. I can't stop. I'm re slowly replacing all of my clothing items with monster truck memorabilia. Okay, I like that. Got a good I, hat. I think yeah, you hat. got the Gravedigger hat. It's the Undertaker of cars. It really is. It's like yeah. a one-to-one, -one, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. Your fit is uh, impressing the hell out of everyone who's watching the uh, Giant Bomb this week. Um, before we get into the voicemail dump truck, which is a call-in show, and the way you participate is you dial 707 exit flu. Yes, Jan? Mr. Bacalar, I have a question. Is, is it technically a call-in show if people are calling in before the show? And then, like, we're playing you, a recorded message. Doing? I don't know. Are you, are you Colin does to... imply, Colin is a, you know, that's a long time radio thing, and it always means you can call in live to the show and talk to the host. So I think there might be a different term needed. For okay. This. Look, yeah. I've struggled with this reality as well. Maybe Emily can help <laughs> us. Emily, what do we call our show if it's not a call in show? What do we call it? Is it just like a voicemail? Is it a mail like, mail? is it like a voicemail dump it's truck? A, do we just call it that? A time traveling call in show. Ooh, I like oh. that. Time traveling is real hot right now. Yeah, yeah. I've someone, got my finger on the pulse. So I, yeah. Someone could feasibly call in, leave a message, and get on before the end of the show, right? Or no? That's no. true. If, if I had the Google Voice window open right now, they yeah. could call. We're it's not gonna do, we're not gonna possible, do, but that's not how Jan puts the show together. He's got a nice little image there with all the ones that we can select from. Oh my God, there's yeah. so many calls. It's a so, listen back show. I don't know. So, so, so we are going to get to the calls in a second. The way you do that, the way you call in and leave a voicemail, you dial 707 exit flu. We don't know the numbers. Mm -mm. Look it up. Mm -mm. 707 exit flu. Uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. The, what's that? FLU. Yes. FLU. Yeah. Like yeah. seasonal winter flu. Yeah. Um, so please do that. Flu yes. even. A, a, as in swine. Yes. As in yes. swine. Sure. Please do that. Also, before we get into the voicemails, uh, Emily, for the longest time, I've always wondered about your about your name. But I've wondered, yeah. like, what is the panic? What is... I, I think it's very cool. Uh, I've always wanted to, like, have a thing like that. Uh, I can't. I can't do that. So, uh, I just You tried to make know... your own, and you made stickers of it and put it all over the fucking city. <laughs> you tried to make your own dumb nickname happen. That's not aggressively. First of all, <laughs> first of all, first everybody's of all. coming for you, Jeff. He's got a uh, neon sign of his self-given nickname behind it's not his head right now. What do you think? That, that, did you, you had give okay stickers printed of your own nickname? Oh, I did that. I made stickers. I've, I've seen personal you stick branding. Them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Emily, how up. did you, how did this come to be? I want to know more about the panel. Ooh, like an, an origin panic. story. I love it. Yeah. yeah. What's the etymology here? The etymology is that when I was in high school, I had a band called Johnny Panic, which is named after a short story by Sylvia Plath called Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams. It's a great short story. We were an all-girl three-piece, but we were sort of like, at that time, we were sort of anti-all-girl groups. We would not have called ourselves feminists. I hate to say that we were probably like, um, what's it called? Like, guys, gals, except that we were friends with each other. I don't mm. identify as that anymore. I love women women friends um okay, <laughs> but yeah okay. we had it we had a band called johnny panic that was a, a punk band and so similar to the ramones we uh i was emily panic then there's alex panic and danny panic were the other members but i i kept mine right on i feel like that's that sounds right that sounds good that sounds right <laughs> and how it should be 
Right, okay, so if I, I guess my question to you is like, if if you could give Dan, uh, myself, and Jen like proper names, and now look, I know it's uh, you don't wow. have to answer it now. Wow. And we can wait to the end of the show. Um, yeah, maybe after like we've learned more about each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. maybe okay, it's good. that. Yeah. Maybe that's the goal of the episode. I'll keep that in the back of the old dome piece. Uh, okay. Uh, make <laughs> make it. Dan's bad. Back our, we all, should have objectives obviously. for each show now. Yeah. You know, oh, we should have a goal. At the end of the show. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Well, a yeah. little objective marker pops up in the left corner. That's a video game thing. I'm sorry, Ooh. Emily. Someone in, someone in chat called... Um, Called Dan, we could call him Danny Lactose, or like, or just like Dan Cheese, maybe. I'm not a like lactose guy. I don't think. But that's cheese. You, that's cheese. That's cheese you but I think lactose Dairy. also is, it brings in a much like I don't. I don't know the last time I had a glass of milk. You know, like when I think lactose, I think milk, and I'm not like a milk enthusiast. You're not a milkman. I'm not a milkman. Oh, I don't have anything man. against milk. I harbor no ill will towards milk, but I don't think about it. Okay. Yeah, but you you consume. But mm. but he consumes a great deal of milk through other no, products. No, I don't. Cheese is milk in cheese. Ladies and gentlemen, seven oh seven exit flu is. I know the they're in the dairy section. I just don't know number. if milk is involved in the cheese process. Yeah. Anyway, Are I you, thought it was like a butter thing. What is? I, what's your life been? <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> an hour. Like I asked. Okay. An hour tops. <laughs> a few dozen you know thousand hours of podcasts, I can catch up. On the best part about how I came to be. The best part about Dan Reichert, right? It's a short list. This is a short list. The best part about Dan Reichert is that whenever you talk to him, it's like meeting him for the first time. <laughs> what does that mean? It's a spice what of life. Mean? I love it. You know, you're it's, right. You're it's right. True. Dan, it's true. he's not being mean. Don't worry. It's not being mean. Jeff's not being mean. No, it's okay. not me being mean. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just saying it. Like it's true, and I'm saying it. Okay. I'm not being mean. Sure. Milks sure. and cheese, motherfucker. Okay. I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. That good. sounds okay. plausible to me. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> we All right. now need th to go to a cheese factory, Dan. That's how this ends. I'd love to. Osceola mm -hmm. Cheese in Missouri. It's great. That's more of a cheese store, which is different than a factory, but yeah. How is there milkless <laughs> cheese? Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. like There's vegan cheese. Very alternative like nut cheeses. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think I've had some of that and it's fine. But like the traditional, like I go out there and buy it, bite into a block of cheese, like that, I'm getting a little bit of milk in there. Yep. Just More than smidge. a little bit of milk. It's the <laughs> primary smidge. ingredient in cheese. How does it solidify it? I don't know. They put stuff in it. Yeah, dude. Don't worry you about know how your... you churn into butter, like yeah. the cream. Is butter in cheese? Uh, is milk in uh, butter? It's derived from the same core. It's Is like, it okay, butter? okay, hold on. I think I got this. I think I got this. All right. Uh, Dan, think of milk as the Saiyan gene, okay? okay. Can we do devil gene? Mean? I know more about Tekken than I know Dragon Ball. Okay, I, you, I oh, couldn't help you. Devil there. gene. Yeah, there's no Tekken no, I can't, milk analogy. I can't help you with Tekken milk. What about, like, can, you, can, you, can it be like the NOI family in wrestling? Can, can we use that? Ye mm. Give me a second, and I'll get back to you. Okay, okay. I can't believe we could have done a whole episode on milk. Uh, for back to we school. We can't. I have a lot of questions about milk. And <laughs> yeah, all my family do. is farmers and grocers, and I still don't really understand how it plays into all these other foods. So okay. you're qualified. I got it. You're I know qualified. we had a whole thing years ago about me not understanding butter, and it's instantly left my brain. I still have no idea where butter comes from. Dan, I, think milk's I, involved. I, I got the wrestling analogy okay, to help you figure out <laughs> this milk. This will help. This will help. Okay. okay. Think of just being Samoan as milk, okay? Okay. All right. Yes. You, you I'm following. Get, you, you ha make it one way, and you get the whole Anoe family. You get your Samoa okay. Joes, the Usos, and everything. Joe isn't... It's, uh, Samoa Joe's not part of that family. Uh, I, I mean, Roman Reigns being Joe Reigns. Oh, oh, Joe Anoe. Okay, yes, okay, yes. I see. Okay, okay, okay. My mistake. Okay. And that is... That's your cheese. You okay. make it a the different NOI way. family is cheese. You make it a different way, and you get butter, just like you get Samoa Joe. But they're all Samoan. Yes. Just like they're all milk-derived. Milk yes. Okay. There you go. It's just a different. Okay. Oh my God, Jan. So all dairy if you is could milk. Just travel with Dan all the time and just like be his like conduit to the world. <laughs> we, we did I've, this I've in Copenhagen. And yeah, we went to Copenhagen <laughs> together. I, I'll try stuff. I'm an adventurous person. We had several yeah. hot dogs on that trip. We did. Yeah. They were really good. Yeah. I do good consider old... myself very open-minded and adventurous. Yes, you are. <laughs> 
Thank I just you. don't remember any dating profile or whatever. I'm a happily married man. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's awesome. Uh, I, I'm right. not ready to explain sour cream to Dan. I don't that, want to know anything that, about that. I'm, yeah, I'm anti that. that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going down that road. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily, no, that you. earns you uh, very the very prestigious honor of choosing today's first voicemail. Please have at it. Okay, hold on. I just need to yeah, center myself here. Okay, let's... Uh, mm. uh, okay, let's do pearl onions. Okay. One of the cuter on you. Yo, bomb dooters, this is Panda from Minnesota. I got beef with pearl onions. They're tiny. They're pain. You have to peel them, but you add them to a stew, and they're delicious. And they're a little like flavor bombs of onion goodness with your meat or your stews. That's all. Have a good day. Yeah, Thank you, caller. I mean, you know, are these the flavor crystals that White Castle uses? No. Is that what a pearl onion is? Okay, that's a different thing. I okay. thought the flavor crystals were in... Wasn't that McDonald's you were talking about? No, it was always White Castle because Andy McNamara couldn't believe that I didn't realize... I thought I'd never tried an onion, but I eat White Castle stuff all the time. And he asked what I thought those were, and I thought they were just flavor crystals, and he told me they were onions. So I didn't know if that was the onions that we're referring to so, here. So, so just Is to be clear... your main thing being ignorant about food? <laughs> <laughs> main yes. thing? It kind of is. I, I got a lot of things. That's definitely a big thing. That has I, been a big... Okay. That predates any podcast. That, that goes way, way I, back Yeah, to I would assume yes. so. Yes. Yeah, Emily, um, like if, if you were to look at like the pie chart of like all that all the dumb shit that comes out Dan of his face. Sings. Yeah, like it's himself, definitely it is one like, of them. Yes. Yeah. Pie like a quarter of it is it's totally a, it's a pillar, food. I would call it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like his Mount Rushmore for sure. Yeah. It's just, it's just one me of being food. afraid of sour cream is one of the heads on South Yeah. On the, okay. Okay. Really yeah, good question. Head. It's a really good good, good observation. See, you're learning a lot. You've you've met Dan a few times, but like this is like the first <laughs> time, right? Um, <laughs> uh, wait, uh, tell me what a pearl onion is then. It's, it's like a little, little it's like a little tiny, like trans, almost translucent, white, clearish looking onion. Oh, yeah. Right? I was imagining, like, before we started talking, I was imagining them j in jars because you put them in, uh, like hmm. cocktail, like cocktail, yeah, like a onions. Gibson. Yeah. I don't know if that would be the same type of onion, but obviously those come peeled. I, I but I hear what he's saying that it's they're difficult, you know. But if they're little flavor bombs, you got to work for it, baby, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like uh, yes, a Gibson Martini is uh, is an onion, a pearl onion. Do they uh, overpower concoction. things? Uh, they add to things. Definitely. They're probably too small to overpower. Because this is making me think of a cherry tomato, and in my recent adventurous years where I try things, I tried a tomato for the first time, but it was a, a cherry tomato, and I bit into it, and it was like just a big explosion of juicy, and it just like it was overwhelming. And now I just I will not touch a cherry tomato. Those are yeah. the tiny ones, right? The, the ones yes. that look like grapes. Yes. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah. Hence the cherry. Uh, well, I there's feel grape like tomatoes. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Very similar to cherry tomatoes, Dan. I don't think you need to explore that. Yeah, I had an actual cherry for the first time in the last year, and they were really good. Oh, Mazel Tov, that sounds. Yeah, I, I like cherries. Yeah, um, I feel, I feel like, you know, onions. Uh, onions are fucked up because it's like they're super aggressive raw. Like I can't handle a no. lot of raw onion, but the second you start cooking those up and you saute those little bastards, mm. Mm. where it's mm. at, you know what I'm Delicious. saying? Delicious. Have Ooh, I have fine. I told y'all how my family gets rid of a cold? No. Yes. Oh, can I guess? Yes. Do you cut an onion in half and like leave it in the room? Uh, cut it to absorb sickness. Cut an onion in half. Yes. <laughs> to absorb sickness. The, I've heard of this. The, the absorb sickness part still may be actually true. My my parents have always told me: start feeling a little bit of cold, cut an onion in half, eat one one of the ha halves raw. Oh fuck! That's a prison sentence, dude. Oh my god! I've never been sick. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm all the onions I've had are raw. Thing. I think I've only had raw onions because, like, right, the, so the other I'll alternative is, is caramelized, <laughs> right? Caramelized is the other option. No, no, no. One of we, the options. No, it's not just raw or caramelized. I feel like whenever I've, I've only had onions, I can count on two hands how many times I've had onions. And I feel like most times they've been crispy. And doesn't that mean raw? It's fried. Like, they're, they're like, it's like fried. crunchy. Breaded? They're fried? They're fried. Are they yeah. breaded? Like, like an no, onion I, ring I, I, I is a fried an onion. onion ring. I tried an onion ring uh, once yeah, at least. That's a fried onion. You can fry it and make it crispy. Sometimes for salads, I cut them thin and then you soak them in water and it kind of pulls out some of that harsh flavor. 
Does That's the move. That raw texture. You can also pickle like an onion. Fried. Because I, mm. I, I, I bit the onion ring and then it all just slid out like a weird snake and I just like I ate the breading that. and I left the onion on the plate. Yeah, no one's figured that out. No one's really you gotten... Bite. You have to like really bite yeah. through. Sometimes it still doesn't work, but that's what you got to aim for. I don't want to yeah, think about what I'm eating. I just want to be able to put a dumb thing in my face and enjoy it. You could just put the clear. whole thing in your mouth then. Yeah. yeah I feel like the ring fold would be too hard. Yeah, fold them. Fold yeah. that bastard. Well, Here's if you made onion yeah. rings with pearl onions, they'd be teensy rings, Dan. That's right. Do they do that? Is there like popcorn onions? Ooh, like popcorn I'm sure chicken? someone's fried. Hold on a second, I have to call my business manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That I would sounds eat, pretty good. Popcorn I would eat that. onions? Can we put that in the store? Annex popcorn onions. I would Ooh. try that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We got we got something out of this. Good job, Dan. Maybe anytime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jan, you're up, buddy. Choose the next one, please. Um flip a page. What's up, right. Dumbers? This is Brian from Attica. Uh, hey, just a weird question, kind of gross. Um, I have a friend who refuses to, you know how you, like, lick your, like, finger before you turn the page of a book? Like, yeah. like get your fingers sticky to get the paper? Yeah. So he swears that he, that's too gross, so he'll, like, let a little dribble of spit, like, fall out onto his finger, and it's, like, super uh... gross to watch, but... The more I think about it, I can't help but think he's right. So my question for you is, no. even though it's aesthetically way grosser, isn't that a more hygienic approach to the old lick your finger to flip a page situation? Look, like what, if that's the question... Like, if, which is grosser? It's, yeah. Look, it's great. Too, grosser and we weirder to drool onto your finger. If the question is, is it more <laughs> hygienic? I'm sure, letter of the law, objectively, yes, not putting your finger in your mouth is probably more hygienic, but I will take the the hit to the hygiene to not be just fucking, like, drooling onto a onto my hand, you know? Yeah. yeah. I. Th this is one of those cases where, like, your friend is right, but also wrong. Yeah. yeah. You, you know? shouldn't do that. Yeah. Like, don't... Like, I can't even imagine. I was trying to visualize what this psycho is doing. Is it just like... Does he have that much aim with his drawer? Yeah, like, is he just letting... Yeah, that's insane. Don't, don't, don't that is an insane thing to do. Why it's wouldn't insane. Why wouldn't he just be like, well, I'm going to wash my hands before I read a book. <laughs> How about or, that? The thing I just thought of is that you could maybe, like, breathe, you know, oh, onto yeah, your finger. Yeah. And then there's still a little moisture there, probably enough to turn the page, but... I'm also wondering why are you watching your friend turn pages? <laughs> right. Sure. What, what situation? Context yeah. is that happening in? Um, but no, your friend is insane. Also, you could have like a little cup of water that you just dip your finger in if you really need the moisture, <laughs> or lotion your hands. That'll do the same thing. Yeah. There's so many solutions that don't involve you going. Hold on a second. <laughs> you know. I, yeah. I. It's like there's so many. There's so many reasons to not put your finger in your mouth like i get it like that's just not what you want to do i also I, like i when i see people do that though it drives me really crazy the the, the, the finger, like, finger like, especially, oh dude especially with like money motherfuckers who count uh, money oh yeah okay. i mean that's probably Fair. like money an old is already so dirty it's i feel disgusting. like when people do the money thing it's usually the thumb right like in movies like yeah. ah, and then they go you know that like yeah, money like, is a thumb thing I, page turning is a finger thing yeah, like a bank teller, like, yeah. and then just start. I'm like, you know, keep the money. I don't you want just it. Just have one of those little things, like you stick your thumb on it, and then you. Oh can... right, like a sticky. Well, yeah. There's like a wet pad, right, or something. Isn't that just a, a big sponge? thing? A gack, like Nickelodeon gack. You just had that. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, gack. I don't think gack leaves moisture on your hands. Though. It makes it a little clammy. Gack's got some moisture going on. Yeah, I guess it's been you're right. Quite it, a long time since I um, <laughs> since you gacked up. Gack. I was looking for Gack on Amazon within the last week. And yeah, how foam? Uh, I couldn't oh, find it. I they have foam was like the little bub the little bubbly like yeah. dots. Yeah. Flarp yeah. is the current thing. They got a bunch of weird sticky sand stuff, but I couldn't find Gack or Flome, but Flarp is readily available on Amazon. Is it Nickelodeon? Yeah. No, I think this is some off brand oh. Gack. Flarp is. Flarp? Flarp. But you, All right. but you didn't know about milk and cheese. Didn't know it. I only got so much room in the old noggin here. Yeah, what's the chemical old... compound composition of uh, <laughs> good smelling, good flum. feeling, fun stuff? <laughs> the giant oh, bomb shit. motto, really. Yeah, no. <laughs> we should sell giant bomb branded flarp now as well. Oh, we should probably awesome. do. It's not a bad yeah. idea. I'm a big silly um, putty guy. Actually, it is a bad idea. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say it. <laughs> 
Counterpoint. Uh. Oh, that sucks. All right. Oh, oh Chad Dan. says I know more about Nickelodeon than Dairy. Oh my God, like eight hundred times more about Nickelodeon than Dairy. Are you kidding me? I could talk about Nickelodeon. I, yeah, I all could day. believe it. I, I, yeah. I, I, did you I see that documentary? I did. Yes. I did. I that was so that. good. Yeah, Ooh, yeah they, were, they were kind of ahead of the curve on some stuff on those early days of Nickelodeon. It was like a, a Hulu Nickelodeon documentary about like the golden age of Nickelodeon, which I was a child for. Um, yeah. It's great. Loved it. It was awesome. God, I wanted to go to space camp so fucking bad. Oh, Damn. yeah. Didn't, didn't, is was, that like, where they, the prize. Yeah. For stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that the one where they spent a lot of time on like Double Dare and they were like, Yo, Double Dare had some skeletons in that fucking closet, right? No, there's no. been some stuff about like Mark Summers, but like it's Mark Summers was not a bad guy. People just talk about how he was like, you know, he was obsessive compulsive and things like that. Oh, okay. oh you'd be surprised that the guy who hates being like dirty and stuff was on the messiest show ever. But like I, sure. as far as I know, Mark Summers wasn't like canceled or anything. No, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't fishing for that. Um, I just want to know some fucked up shit about Double Dare. That's all. Nah, Double Dare was pure. He was a real big mouth, actually. That mouth yes. was real. I could have oh. found that flag in that nose. It's so quick. Oh, dude, I used to fantasize about those orange flags, man. I yeah. want them so I want to like be that guy. Just a kiddie pool of whipped cream just trying to find that damn the flag. Poor PAs that have to clean up after oh. the show. <laughs> That's what you gotta do for the next bombathon. Oh yeah, my seriously. god, are we gonna just do a double dare? Set up a double dare. Oh, uh, that's a great <laughs> idea. Let's have a whole guts idea. course too. Oh, oh, oh do, man. Do, do, do you have it? I do have yeah, it. I, I could do it, yeah. Oh. Is Mo still alive? I think Mo's yeah. alive. Yeah, Michael Malley's alive. Michael Malley's an actor. Oh. He's like on shit. Yeah, yeah. He was in the Michael Malley show. Good for him. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, was the, uh, he was the lead, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Mo. I, I haven't heard from Mo. Uh, I haven't heard everyone, but I, I think so mm -hmm. many people between the age of like 35 and 45 had a childhood crush on Mo. I actually right. don't remember what Mo looks like. No, I just remember the leaderboards. <laughs> Bland white lady. Mm -hmm. Hair. <laughs> she was British, right? Yes. Uh, in third place is Tommy with yeah. That yeah. was like her thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um. And then what about what was the other weird show? There was like a weird story. About, oh, uh, the Legends of the Hidden Temple, where it was like what impossible was to win. All the it was impossible to win. Shit at that. Yeah. Was, no, no, no. It was impossible to win. Like it, it was, was just a dumb thing really you could difficult. get the you could get the pendant and that would like hold off like one temple guard, but there'd be like five temple guards in there and you just wander into a random room and they're like, oh, you're fucked. That show caused me so much anxiety just picturing myself being there and the temple guards coming out is so yeah, there was, horrifying. There was some weird horror there for sure. Uh, <laughs> I had speaking to stop of weird horror, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of weird horror, Dan Reichert. Yes. No, oh, that's, the joke. Thing. that's the joke. Uh, weird we did the pearl onions. Let's go with two in the front. <laughs> hey guys, uh, Arthur from Chicago. Um, I'm a high school teacher. And I just got into my car and parked next to me. I don't know if it's a student, parent, I don't know. They're not in the car. But in the school parking lot is a car, a minivan, with a bumper sticker. And it says, red letters, the minivan. Two in the front, five in the back. Uh, it's kind of aggressive for a high school. What are your thoughts on that? Thanks. Love you. Bye. Thank, thank you, caller. What's he implying? I don't get what? it. What? No, I, so... I don't get it either. So... It's well, yes, you all do. You're lying. You're explaining. I don't get that. supposed to be like a sexual innuendo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like, what do you mean? Well, like, uh, so the the bumper sticker he cut out a little bit, but the bumper sticker sounded like it said like two in the front, five in the back. I think that's just being descriptive as far as yeah. how many people like, can yeah. fit in the vehicle, right? But everyone yeah. knows like the you know like the the finger innuendos that you, you've heard someone say like oh, please elaborate blank, oh, blank, blank, elaborate. Blank, okay, right. right yeah what do you mean uh okay no no <laughs> what okay. do i mean yeah people just say, people dan you're fucking with me yeah i just like, i'm just curious got it. you're clearly implying something i just don't understand it's uh, just, just like if you could describe it no it's like vagina and butt stuff B my god <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is oh it's vagina um, yeah I really like, think if I had seen that bumper sticker, I'd be like, yeah, that's descriptive of how many people fit in yeah, a min minivan. I know exactly so. what you expect. It's like when you order a lift and it's like, okay, this one's for four people. Or, oh, <laughs> yeah. we have five. We need an XL. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So five that in the back, I, I don't know why it would be an odd number. Oh, no, right. Because they have the two seats and then the three mm -hmm. in the back. Yeah. Right. One's okay. in the middle. Yeah. 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 You have to use two hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two hands. Oh, my God. Sounds like <laughs> that teacher just has a dirty mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I didn't even think if that was a teacher's minivan. Yeah. Mm. No, no, I mean the teacher who called in. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that teacher's a perv. 
That's why we love you. Thanks for calling, caller. Only with cars, though. Only with cars. Yeah, it's that. It's all about that cussy. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, you know about cussy? Uh, ne- never mind. Ask Tam. Uh, okay. It's a filthy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, family the day show. that uh, they announced Passion of the Christ two back, Lar. Come on. What? Wait, what? Is this like? They? Yes. What? Wait, how do you make a sequel to that? I don't know. I mean, there was a whole. I mean, he like did come back and like the lore. Did he get resurrected? I, I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, oh, like this is like the Christmas, part, really, or what is it? What is it? You got you got that's Easter. Yeah, uh, yeah Easter is when he comes back. Monica Bellucci. Yeah, okay. Is that canon? Uh, I mean, canonically, I mean, there was a second part to the Jesus thing. Yeah, he came like back after a while. People, that's why people were like, "Whoa, he's magic!" Because he came back. He like he came back from the dead. On top of the other magic days. things he did, yeah. He had a bunch of tricks and stuff, but I think the coming back from the dead was the one that's like, oh, fuck, let's make a whole church out of this guy. Yeah. Illusions. Dan, yeah. you yeah. would totally be that guy. Jesus? Just like, well, I didn't say Jesus, but I said that guy who's just like, oh, where'd my thumb go? And then like a million people will follow you wherever you go. I think it would be to fun it. to be, I, I think being a benevolent cult leader would be fun. Uh... Like with no, no, there's no Kool Aid. There's no weird evil stuff. There's no murder. It's just like, hey, let's have our fun little group and let's uh, we'll we'll play okay, poker and think, stuff. If you're being honest with yourself, do you believe that you have leadership qualities? <laughs> this is an interview. This will count. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think I could get some followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. a happy fella. I think I, I've got some thoughts on life. I think and that's have, the have, quality have of a leader it. is being a happy fella who doesn't know about cheese. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's a Candy defining tomatoes. part of like. It doesn't impact my happiness by any means. I think uh, I, I think I got my head screwed on straight when it comes to life stuff. I may not know the ins and outs of dairy, but in terms of just leading a happy, fulfilling life, I'm a okay. I think that would be so sick if you did get like tens of millions of people to just follow you everywhere you go, and then like some simple food question comes up, and like you just balk at it, and everyone just like goes. Home. I would have like a food secretary in my cult that like <laughs> I. It would be like a consultant where I'd be like, "Hey, what the fuck is this onion?" And they would tell me, "Like I, I don't need follow, to be in charge of that." I don't think I could follow anybody who's a picky leader. Like, <laughs> you think the president of Ukraine is like, "Oh, that hurts my tummy" or whatever? That's my impression of you. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, it's nothing new with my tummy. I think stuff is weird and tastes gross. Saying. That's why I think it's weird. It's, weak. it's just a matter of taste. Everyone's got their own personal taste. Weak. That doesn't disqualify real me from leaders. Leadership. Yes, it does. Yeah, real leaders can eat whatever. It's you don't true. think we've had picky eater presidents? Maybe. Uh, Kvass, Kvass in the chat was like, "I wouldn't follow someone who asked." What is butter made from? <laughs> Again, Jan's my agriculture secretary. I don't need to know it. <laughs> hey, you know, I got a job. I'm not going to say shit. <laughs> you think oh. Joe Biden knows how to start a farm? No, he's got a dude that, you know, he doesn't know how to, like, run a bus system. He's got Pete Buttigieg or whatever. Yeah, but I think if somebody, if somebody handed him a raw steak, he wouldn't hesitate before taking a bite. Yeah. I, love, I would eat steak. I, I've eaten so many steaks. No. Is, there's a chat going on, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. D- drop a line in the chat. Would you follow Dan? As, yeah, as your come cult on. Leader? Well, you volunteered folks. that and say no. <laughs> Get in there. I, I think so. I, I think I would do just fine. Well, I'm saying Bottom nose coming in, in yes. here. Said some yeses. Oh, I look oh. at the chat. Uh, I've seen that. Yeses for sure. Okay. Damn, I could boy. get elected to public office, and I really mean that. I think you could do become it. mayor. Prove it. I think yeah. I could become a mayor. Yeah. Well, I'm of like, not kidding. Like, as yeah. a joke, I think I could do it. As a bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, someone just did that, okay? Someone just, like, falsified their way and got yeah, in, George you know. Santos, oh, yeah, I heard about man. that guy. Yeah. yeah, oh, you're, oh, you admire him dearly, no, I sure. do. <laughs> I could, oh, God, you, I mean, sure, if you in public office, that would be an improvement, I feel like, let's be honest. Um. All right, let's pick another one here. Let's go with, uh, don't know what's real anymore. As Trash Texas, I just want to say, Terry said Dead Mouth 5 uh, hurts me more than Mario. <laughs> uh, at this point, I don't even know if you're legit. Uh, it's just so many poor pronunciations. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what's real anymore. Okay. So, I've heard there. Dead Mouth 5 before. Yeah. So, obviously, like, pronunciations of words and stuff like that are, you know, one thing, right? Like, uh, you know, the way I say Mario is the way I say Mario. That's just how I say Mario. Jersey pronunciation. Yeah, like, it's fine. I'm okay. It's gonna be okay. Uh, to be fair, Deadmau5 has a 5 in it. Uh, <laughs> like, there's it's a 5 true. in there. 
I do you know? feel like you shouldn't like you can't get mad if you spell something a certain way and then people like like if I say Chiverches, the band Chiverches yeah. can't get mad because hey, they're the ones who did the V thing. I love the movie Mithrigan. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly. I've been meaning yeah, to see that. I haven't that. seen it yet, no. but I'm looking forward to seeing it. I would like to see that. That's yeah. how uh, Jenna Ortega's been saying it. <laughs> you know? I uh, like that. I yeah. mean, you know, this just further backs up why the way I pronounce clipboard makes sense. No, that Well, let's sense. not get ahead of you ourselves. The word? Let Emily know. <clears throat> okay. Emily, you've heard of the word cupboard before, right? Yeah, like a cupboard. Exactly. So... Therefore, clibbered should make sense as well. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But like, okay, that, that's obviously a joke with the demo five. Like, but again, it's also whatever. But uh, what's your take on Mario? I've had, we haven't had like an, an outsider's <sighs> take on Mario in a while. Just the pronunciation of the name, or Mario yeah. in general? Yeah. Just no, no. Your how you feel about the the game is fine. You know, we're happy to hear that as well. But like the way I pronounce, like Super Mario Brothers gets gets like a very large percentage of people upset. Okay, here's what I think about that. When you say it, it sounds natural to me. It might be because I'm also from New Jersey that mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers sounds right to me, even though I know he goes, it's a me, Mario. Exactly. But saying yeah. Super Mario, no, that sounds right too. Actually, yes. So, I'm actually fine with both pronunciations because uh, I've I've experienced them. <laughs> Emily Panic bringing balance. It's very simple. Mario is fine. You, I'm sure you've met people named Mario. I'm sure there are a lot of people in this area named Mario. But the Mario in Nintendo is literally, he says his name, it's a me, Mario. It is the Super Mario Brothers. Mario is correct in many other circumstances. With that fella, the plumber, it's Mario. How do you say uh, Mario? I like... I like Wario. Emily's. I like Emily's answer better. Uh, is what I'm going to go with. So I think you. it's Emily. open to interpretation. Tie goes to the guest. Is how Zendaya, it works. On the voice no one knows. Yep. What does she say? Truck. That's how it works. I've heard her say both. Says. Yeah, and how heard her say both. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, I've never heard Mario say Mario. So there. Mm. I have. Oh, dude! Oh. Imagine the only way I get out of this is if Chris Pratt says Mario, yeah. and then it's somehow yeah, like Charles okay. Martinet to say it. And then I have to, like, align myself with that fucking weirdo. Oh, man. No thanks. No Was thanks. Bob Hoskins Mario in, the, uh, in Mario yes. in the original one? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, he's dead now, huh? Yeah. John Leguizamo's alive, though, and he's Luigi. Yeah, let's ask, let's ask uh, John Le Leguizamo. Mm -hmm. He's been in a bunch of movies recently. Good for him. I yeah, saw the menu. It was really enough. good. Yeah. He's I saw the menu. It was good, too. I like yeah. He looked real sweaty in that movie. His inspiration oh. for that character was Steven Seagal. Oh, that's sick. I gotta watch that oh, movie. That, huh? Yeah, actually, I think I thought that mm -hmm. when I was watching it. Now that it was real self-serious. When did the menu idiot. come out? Yeah. Is it eligible for awards? It was late. Awards? This, uh, it was December, yeah, so I think it's 2022 okay. awards, yeah. Or it came yeah. out in November in theaters for a quick run. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, thank you, everybody. Oh, I know and what thank you doing. for validating the way I speak, Emily. Um, chat, it's your turn. Chat toes, ringtone. Chat chose ringtones. MP3. Oh. Dumpa lumpa dumpa dee do. It's Harris from Toronto with a question for you. So, mm. do you all remember the time when uh, ringtones were huge, like really huge? Nowadays, people just keep their phones on silent and vibrate. Even in like movies and TV shows, all we really hear is notification sounds. Um, I think the first ringtone was either the phone from. Uh, the show 24, you remember that? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, CBU, dun, dun. Yeah. were called, I think. Um, the ringtone in the movie Crank, which was really funny. Uh, or the quick call sound from Metal Gear Solid, which got annoying mm -hmm. really quick. Um, do you remember your first ringtone? Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you, too. Thank you, caller. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I, I think I know why the person is asking the question. And I love the preamble. To, like the history of ringtones instead of just being like yeah. do you remember your first one it's yes. like let me take you down <laughs> Memory Memory lane. Lane. Yeah. let's discuss <laughs> um i remember my first ringtone <laughs> i feel like this might be a targeted question then it, it, i think it is a targeted question uh and i <laughs> i don't know i i don't know how to answer it in a funny way my first ringtone was toxic by britney spears oh, i believe this yeah. person is 
referencing the fact that we talked about it on uh, our hit show album or um, it became a running joke. I don't even remember why. I think I just said it a million times. But yes, you're my proud of it. Tone, I am proud of it because it yeah. was like, because that, I mean, first of all, that song is a bop. Yep. Love yeah. that song. Yeah, that was my first ringtone. Um, uh, my brother, without a doubt, had Britney ringtones. Like, he was such a Britney Spears. I don't want to say I don't want to know, I don't want to use like a, a weird adjective. But like he was a he was a big fan of Britney Spears. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's um, part of the the Beehive. Spears head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, what it, that what it was called? I didn't know that. Um, shit. I'm trying. He to was think. a Britney bitch. Mm. Yeah, he was a Britney bitch. That toxic. Um, oh man, fucking best song. Yeah. Now I got that made. song in my yeah. head. Um, Imagine, and every time my phone rang, it's like. I get so panicked each time. Yeah. I could see that happening. Do you remember uh, yours, Dan? Remember, the only time I remember doing like a custom one was uh, on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast once. He was doing his impression of like the the standard iPhone ringtone, and he did it like his voice, and I I cropped it out and I edited it, so it's just like Stone Cold being like ba da ba ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba ba da ba ba. So I had that for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's cool that's pretty cool jan uh i think i had tell me when to go by e40 and then okay. uh an acquaintance heard that go off during class once and then he wound up telling me that he thought i had nice elbows i don't, I don't know the connection there i, I yeah. didn't either i am still confused to this day that is weird you moisturize your elbows no no they're they're quite ashy actually and, he, and this was a compliment. They were like, you got, you got some nice elbows. He looked at me. I was like, and he, he said like, E-40. Jan, you got nice elbows, buddy. Me, I think you misheard him. <laughs> what else could I have heard? <laughs> Maybe Wait, he was saying. Can you sing that E-40 song? I can't recall it. Off it just goes boom, 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 boom. And then he just, <laughs> and then like bells start coming in. And then he just starts asking people to tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, the hyphy movement was weird in the Bay Area. Let me tell you. <sighs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I, for the longest time, I actually think it still might be my ringtone. Uh, but again, like the caller said, you don't hear it that much. It's um, it's the outgoing credit song from uh, from uh, the the John C. Riley Adult Swim show. Um, the fuck was it called? Please sing Where it. Steve Brule, he plays like it's like an Him 80s. And and, yeah, it's it's. I think it's called oh, what the fuck? Check it out. Yes, it was called Check It Out, and it was like this very like ugh, 80s, you know, sort of like synthy kind of like news segment outro song. And it was like I heard it once. I was like, that's the perfect ringtone, and I just used it. I can't sing it. It's just instrumental. It's just I can't okay. do. No, it. you could still try and sing it. Yeah, it's you could. Like, yeah, I don't like, know why I let you off the hook so fast. No, yeah, I appreciate it. That was very generous. <laughs> it, it's like, uh, it was like, bam, 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 but da bam, 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 but da bam, bam, bam. It's just like very, you know, action newsy kind of thing. Uh, it was fun. It's fun. I'm trying to think what else I've fun. had over the years. Yeah, all those, all those like twenty four intercom noises. Mm-hmm. Ugh, it was so there was someone in even right before the pandemic on Twenty Eighth Street, someone had that fucking ringtone and just never silenced. And it was just like, what are you doing, man? There's a lot of uh, <laughs> Law and Order. Dunk dunk. Oh shit, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, there's some of them that don't get old. Like I feel like yeah, but I, eh, I don't know. Um, very good. Thank you, chat. Emily, we're back to you. Choose your second voicemail, please. Okay. Let's do... Doubted it. Hey, Dumpers, this is Travis uh, from Florida, formerly from in your rearview mirrors. Oops, hold on. uh, From Florida, formerly from Philly. And I'm getting caught up on the podcast. I'm really far behind. So I'm just getting to the whole, like, Marvel snap fucking you're gonna start a driving podcast thing but my point is that someone said fucking if you can see the side of your car in your rear view mirrors they're not properly adjusted and that's the way i've always done it because it's all like well, you gotta see the side of my car blah 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 i adjusted them outwards to where i can't see them anymore dude 
so much better. So yeah. just like A, thank you for advice, and B, anyone else like me who doubted it for, you know, a little while and then finally just tried it out, tried it out. It 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 takes some adjusting. But wow. So much better. Love you guys. Bye bye. Thank you, caller. Oh shit! So you were not supposed to see your car in the no, in you're the, not uh, supposed in the to see side, it. the side, the side mirror, right? correct? Yeah. On the this side. Is something that you guys have already discussed on on this show. Yeah, like months ago. I should think that. That's I, I interesting because that. I I always adjust it so I can see my car a little bit. I think just to calibrate how far stuff is because then I could see it in relation to my yeah. car. Sure. Yeah, I think that's the that's the trap, uh, Emily. That's the trap we all <laughs> fall into. Uh, sure. Is that there is a false sense of security seeing the butt of your car in your rear in your side mirrors. Uh, it is comforting, I bet, but it is also wrong. Okay. Well, back when you got your space car that drives you around everywhere and probably tells you where all the cars are around you, your crazy cameras above you. That thing's fucking it, nuts. I, I was in Backlar's car and it's it's insane. That fucking screen with all the cameras that like, oh my god, okay, what the be, fuck spaceship do you have? What's that? You you know, describe it. No, like so there's okay, so Dan's describing like you ever see you ever been in a car with like the 360 view where you could see like it stitches like all the cameras. It's like there's on his- a drone flying above his car, and you can see everything around his car. Oh, I don't like we know. could yeah. see people can standing see outside the car. car? Yeah, well, it's insane it, looking. It like superimposes a car there, and it stitches together like all the cameras that surround the car, so that it looks like you are looking at the vehicle wow. from the top. It's crazy. But it's yeah. also like pretty common now, like with newer ish cars. I feel like Dan, you you Dan got in there and was just like. A caveman in Times Square, like it was very much like it was very much like what's happening. Abby was standing in the parking lot, and I could see like a top down Abby cam. Weird. Yeah, I get it. No, it's cool. Um, yeah, for sure. That's. I mean, yeah. What what else can I say? But no, like a lot of cars have cameras on them now. Of course, right? Backup cameras and stuff. yeah. Yeah, backup cameras. I think are like standard now, or they have to be soon. Uh, but yeah, you gotta you gotta position them so that you don't see. Who brought it up? Maybe it was Tam or Grub. Might have been Tam or Grub. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm glad we changed this person's life. I mean, look, that's the kind of show this is. Maybe in, mine. I yeah. don't know. In my or head, you tried yeah. out. in my head, the caller just did that and needed to call in immediately. <laughs> yeah, I'll I was so it. overwhelmed it by the open viewing angle, avoided accidents, brighten their day. I'm open to I'm it. Starting to try to get into the because I'm I'm getting better about driving on the highway now. I've been forcing myself to to get over the anxiety thing, and I am starting to understand the point of mirrors. Like I used to, like I don't know. I used to always just aggressively like turn because like they teach you in driving school, like hey, make sure to check your blind spot. So sure. whenever I merge, I'm always just like fucking my head's turned, you know, all the way around. And like I've started looking at the mirrors more, and I'm like, oh shit, you can actually see a lot of what's happening behind you in the mirrors. Yeah, you just gotta just check that one spot. It's like right here. That's just a brief thing. Like the mirrors can give tell you eighty percent of the information. It seems. Yes. I'm just. Yes, Dan. I love hearing that. That's that's awesome. That's no, really honestly, good. every time I did it today, I was like, yeah, oh, holy shit! Yeah. I can actually. I I just feel like you? I, I, you can't tell what lane is happening for sure unless you're looking with your eyes. You know, if you're looking in like a mirror, I'm always just like, okay, I see cars, but what I have no sense of context of what lane they're in or whatever. But I'm getting. Okay. I'm trying to get myself used to it. You didn't pass a driving test. I mean, probably. Where do you live? Uh, Connecticut. I think when I hear, it's just I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be polite. I'm trying to be nice. Diplomatic. Diplomatic. Thank you. It's just when I hear someone say like, "Oh, I'm gonna start to use the mirrors in the car. They seem to have a purpose." It's just like concerning. I mean, that's the stuff. My grandma theater. helped teach me how to drive, and my grandma, when she was telling me about how she merges onto the highway, she goes, "It really scares me." So I just kind of close my eyes and pray <gasps> and just go. You know, your grandma was fucking out of she's her dead. mind. No, she's okay, dead. Take... Okay, because okay. she <laughs> closed her eyes and drove onto the highway. No, she got old and got cancer. Um, but yeah. Okay, 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 okay. But dude, that is like <laughs> to know that. Some fucking old grandma somewhere was just like praying to God, letting literally Jesus take the wheel. Uh-huh. But also Merging. being like, but I'm going to teach you to drive. Here's, here's a little trick that I learned. 
<laughs> like, and this is how you cross yourself with one hand. Like, that's unbelievable, dude. That's unbelievable. Well, for a long time when I was starting, dude. when she was teaching me, I put one foot on each pedal. I would put one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. Oh, uh, where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a reason I get anxious driving. I, you can uh, You can take take a professional driving course. How much yeah, does that cost? Not, not a lot. You can, you can afford it. I mean, how much is the cost of your fucking life? Yeah, dude. Uh, Amen, sister. <laughs> oh, we need and alive. other people. Oh, I would lives. pay. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to kill anyone or die myself. No. Like, I just want to be there on the here. day that you passed your driving exam. And what kind of blind psycho was taking you in the car and just being like, "Yeah, whatever, you pass." I don't get it. <laughs> I think one time. Okay, I don't remember if this was my driving test or no, he was just teaching me. This is unofficial. I have not thought of this in forever. I was driving, I was working for an independent wrestling organization when I was 15. And I was basically just the kid backstage that got people like ice packs and stuff when they got concussed. And I was training to be a ring there. Anyway, that's the whole thing. I went to a wrestling event with a cop, and the cop was in the driver's seat. And he was teaching me how to drive. The cop was like a friend of the family or something. I don't remember. I, it was just me and a cop. And uh, I, I did like something happened on the highway. I don't remember if it was icy or something, but like a spun and went into a ditch and stuff like that. And uh, I don't remember if he was the guy who taught me how to drive or not. I'm sorry. I'm just like unlocking this memory here. I yeah. That ever happened. Yeah. This checks yeah. out, I guess, you know. Yeah. I just like the grandma thing is awesome, though. Like, I'm yeah. glad everyone's safe. But that shit's <laughs> awesome that your grandma was just like, I'll close my eyes and pray to God. Like, that is just fucking insane. Well, my dad didn't know. Like, she actually, no, both of them, my grandma and my dad didn't know anything about cars. And so they didn't know you're supposed to change oil. So they would just drive cars until they didn't work. <laughs> and then my grandpa would show up and be like, God damn it, you got to change the oil. Like, he would check it and be like, bone dry, you know? I, and my grandpa you guys would are always like try to explain. It. You guys are like the squid <laughs> billies, dude. My grandpa constantly even... tried to explain to me, my father, and my grandma things that you have to do for cars. And we were always like, whatever, grandpa. Like, and then our, all our cars broke. Oh my God. I want the cartoon about the Rikerts <laughs> in the 80s. Like, I want that so bad. I'm going to. I would love that. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh. He knew his stuff. I'm sorry. It's just very hard to pivot away from all that. <laughs> just close your eyes and turn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Beautiful we advice. Where'd yeah. you hear that from? Where'd you learn that? An old grandma? Yeah, me yes, too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> all right. With that, please get us out of here with a new voicemail, Jan. Um, at that blockbuster, I guess. Hey there, right. Dumpachinos. John from San Jose. Uh, so last week on the dump truck, Jan and Ben were talking about how you're more likely to encounter hentai growing up in the Bay Area. Right. Um, so one time my local Blockbuster, uh, they had these magazine racks by the video games and with your usual Nintendo Power, EGM, uh, what have you, uh, one time they had this hentai mag with a bunch of new anime girls in it, uh, which I didn't look at. Uh, but anyway, uh, one, time at that, well, one time at that same Blockbuster, um, I tried to rent Shadow the Hedgehog, um, and the guy at the counter gave me Shadow of the Colossus. And I didn't realize until halfway walking home. Uh, but you bet your ass I took it back. Uh, thanks. Love you. Bye. Oh, okay. Well, story at the end there about being a good person, I guess, right? I just Googled hentai. What is that, porn? Oh, no. <laughs> what? I believe it's anime porn. Yes. That's anime porn. Wait, okay. Emily. Really? What? You didn't know? You didn't I know really that didn't was? know that. I only know in the Vegas sense of like I, I'm the Vegas porn. Yeah, yeah, like Las, Las Vegas sense. Vegas, sense. <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> like oh, is that oh, the oh, like okay. octopus stuff and all that? Sure. I mean, yeah. hentai is a very wide net, is okay. it not? Like, it, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a wide what net. What do they do with those nets? Exactly. <laughs> well, you got to watch some Vegas uh, hentai to find out. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out as soon as we get off this. Um, do you think anyone has the Xbox oh. gamer tag Vegas hentai? I don't, I don't know, think but... you'd get allowed. Dude. Hentai is not. Okay. Yeah, is there probably another, flag. Is there another use of hentai, or is it always porn stuff? <laughs> it's always porn stuff. <laughs> okay. There's not like, oh, it's also the word for like bread in Japan. It's not like that. <laughs> no. Imagine okay. if you had to stop and be like, how are you spelling that? Just so I understand what you're saying to me. You're going to go to the store and get bread. Right. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Can we just, can we just get well, that hentai. domain? I think okay. I have to register this domain right Vegas now. Vegashentai.com. <laughs> I got an what, offer code Vegas for you. Vegas hentai? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not -E -S -T. <laughs> No, not, not oh. G-U-S. <laughs> oh, Las Vegas hentai. I guess you want the Las Vegas too. Anyway, Like right. Vegas hentai. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just like a, the implication of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
just tread lightly, Emily, is all we're saying. Maybe throw up an incognito, uh, okay. whatever you need to do to protect yeah, yeah. yourself. But Thank you. You know, tread lightly. Um, yeah. yeah. Turn that VPN on. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Dan, you yeah. are up, sir. <clears throat> what we got here? Uh, down with the sickness.mp3. Hey, dumpers. Colin from Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, so I'm down with the sickness. I just got a simple question. What do you do when you just got like a cold, flu, or the Rona? What's what's your what's your go to remedies and how to just cope? Aww. Love you guys. Eat half Aww. a raw onion. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm still getting over the. Can you do the half a raw onion if you're already sick? Yes. Okay. If you're if you're starting to feel like the the sick tingles, then it'll go away afterwards. Is there I, no is there no like time limit on that? I'm assuming like is that the, uh, is if that you've the rule of been thumb? sick, it doesn't work. It has yeah, to I be wasn't like sure freshly. If it was yeah. Preventative or yeah. Yeah. I tried something can... while I was sick with uh, I was I was really in the throes of coronavirus about a week ago or so, and Tim Turry told me he had heard of an old uh, like Hispanic home remedy where you take uh, a bunch of little uh, a bunch of little like a water like a little bit of water and you put a few drops of like hot hot sauce in it and you gargle with it and you spit it out and I did that a few times and I think it did kind of help clear up some phlegm and things like that. So uh, he says he swears by it, and so far I'd say yeah. thumbs up to it. I did the neti pot when I had. Mm. Um... When I had COVID, I don't know if that helps, but I felt like I had a bunch of congestion in my head and like, I don't know. So I tried doing the neti pot. The only thing is that you have to do it with distilled water. Yes. You can't just do it with tap water, which is important <laughs> because there's that famous case of like uh, brain eating bacteria that somebody was essentially pouring into their brain yeah. via their nostril. And it, I think, I forget if it was one per. I guess it was probably one person. I don't know. But in general, my what I did, luckily my, my husband took my dogs and he went elsewhere. So I was just here by myself in Brooklyn. Just slept a lot, drink a lot of fluids, drink I had a lot of soup, a lot of ramen, a lot of spicy ramen. Um, take Advil, maybe Paxlovid. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that that helps mitigate the um, effects of COVID. I have found the uh, like a menthol nose spray. I use some of that to clear up the the nostrils, and uh, that that's been working for me and, and bonk too lately. So yeah, that'll clear you up. I just I do not like being sick at all, and no. I when I when I had it over last summer, like I couldn't even like I couldn't even wa it hurt to like watch TV. Oh, mm. like I I like and I was just so sore everywhere. I like could, I was oh I I had it bad. Yeah, you yeah. hear about people saying like, oh, you're sick. It's a great excuse to like stay in bed and binge a show or whatever. And it's like, no, when I was like wow. sick, sick with it, I was like just laying in bed, couldn't sleep, couldn't even think about watching or playing anything. Like I was just laying there just being uncomfortable. That was it. Yeah. Like people, I feel like there's too much of this conflation of like, oh, it's, you know, some people it is yeah, just like a, a vacation. cold. vacation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Some, some people it's a cold and it's nothing. Some people get it and it's like it fucks you up and like it your your it's like your brain hurts it's like yeah you know the fever uh, stuff yeah, really sucks. sucks yeah, yeah. i i got a uh, headache hat i i love the headache hat it's uh, that is that like a is that the equivalent of like a a, a thunder coat for a dog no, although that's like a way to blanket. Blanket's pretty nice too. I like those too. Yeah, but um, no, a headache hat is just like a. It's imagine like a big thick bandana, bandana, and it's just got a bunch of like little like knobs of uh or knots of ice in it because they uh -huh. will melt slower that way. And you just like Velcro it around your head. It just kind of looks like like a turban or something, and you Velcro it, and it just keeps your head like it's just physically just shoving ice into your fucking head, and it really helps if you're like running a hundred and one, hundred and two, like I was. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's that sick. Extreme mm -hmm. is good. Lots um, of fluids, electrolytes, sleeping, mm -hmm. yeah. Pedialyte, did a bunch of that. And stay the fuck home, motherfucker. Yes. Stay home. Yes. Uh, all right. I'll move us along. Let us speak about 10 years. Hi, it's Nathan from Tumwater, Washington. Mm. What's your favorite movie of the last 10 years? Man, check my letterbox. Yeah, get a, get your letterbox going. <laughs> you know it's funny. Like I was just having this conversation with someone the other day. I don't if, know if it was on a podcast because uh, I, I have lost the ability to separate the two. Um, 
I feel like I'm much more willing to like run out and see and, and like binge a, a season of television than I than I like as opposed to just going through a movie. I realize one is inc- is such a bigger commitment than the other. But like, yeah. there's something about the way TV has merged into this sort of new golden era that I'm just like, movies kind of don't do it for me at the moment. Mm. Yeah, well, Is it's that like weird. It feels I'm like I mean, I think people in general have a shorter attention span that's been ushered in with like TikTok and all these little clip based things, and so I think it's just easier to have a smaller episode, even if it's part of a bigger story. Like it can keep your attention longer. I know a lot sure. of people have a hard time sitting and watching a whole movie. And it's interesting that in 2022, it felt like every single fucking movie was like two and a half hours. Yeah, too no long. Reason. Too long. I miss a tight 90. Yeah. Ooh, where are those tight 90s? That's why the menu also was good. That was pretty pretty snappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I do have to... There are a bunch that, you know, uh, you know, Stacey gets all the screeners, so I feel like there's... Like, I want to see The Whale. I want to see... The the no the whale is bad. I don't want to watch bad. it. Oh, you don't want to watch yeah, it. It just oh, seems okay. like trauma porn. I don't is know. it? Oh, is not is yeah. that what it is? I think no, it's pretty intense. Yeah. Oh man, I mean, I just really like I mean, Darren Aronofsky. I like B. Fraser okay. though. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy for B. Fraser. I just personally don't feel like I need to see that movie. No, that's fair. B. Fraser is what we should call him now. The B. Fraser. <laughs> yeah. Looks uh, like or P. Fraser. Fraser. One movie in the last ten years, five stars, and that was What's Creed. That? Creed. Creed. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Got a bunch of four and a halfs in the last ten years. Get out. Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Knives Out. Dune. Uh, Black Swan. Uncut. Uncut Gems. Mad Max Fury Road. John Dude, Wick. Ten, ten years is such a crazy window. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, it's like ten I mean, years? it's really hard to pick just one. Dan. Andy. Dan named mine uh, in that list. Fury Road. That's that's a good. One. Oh, oh my yeah, god, that's, that was fun. Oh god, yeah. seeing it in like the black and you chrome version. It? Oh my god, that's awesome. Oh, oh, they released like a like a, a Sin City version of it. Oh yeah, it's so good. Oh my god, that's cool. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm scrolling through a list of the best movies of the last <laughs> ten years, and none of these are movies that I were my favorite. But one that popped into my head was The Favorite. Um, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos with um, Olivia Coleman and and Rachel Vice. Okay. Um, I really loved that movie. Uh, I like Yorgos Lanthimos. He's very weird, very dark. He did also The Lobster. Mm. Um, yes, I enjoyed I, The Lobster. That was Colin Farrell, right? I did not yeah, enjoy yeah. The Lobster. Oh, weird. he also <laughs> did The Killing of a Sacred Deer, which I loved. And okay. Yorgos did not write the screenplay for The Favorite, so it's like it's got some of that Yorgos dark weirdness, but it's... It's it's a little bit more I think palatable, but it's like very funny, dark. It's sort of um, anachronistic historical drama comedy. I think okay. it's great. Yeah. Very good. I I, uh, I got one I'd like to put up there. Okay. It's Please. it's it's a very common one, but I but it still stays with me to this day. I I think the Grand Budapest Hotel is like fucking awesome. Yeah. Best colors I in a movie. That's something I could just yeah. watch and it just feels good. Like I could just watch that and I feel good for two hours. You know? Hey, there's something to be said about a movie where you can just watch and feel good. Uh, I saw that in the theater and I don't remember it that well. So I've, I've got to rewatch it, but I remember liking it. Ralph yeah, from think, the menus in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's fun. Like totally a movie. There's so, uh, too rare, right? Are movies that like you can now watch again. I feel like, like one of my, it's funny. One of the, my favorite movies of all time in the back of my like head canon is Children of Men, right? Mm. I but watched like, that like a month ago. Yeah. It's like, I can't fucking watch that again. Yeah, There's no can. fucking way I can watch that again. It's still no. good. It's still a couple times. Like, the way I remember it and it also catching up to the, the, the time period that it's portraying <laughs> and how we are seemingly like, you know, hurtling towards that future. I can't fucking do that. I can't fucking watch that. It's too real. It's for preparation me. then. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I want to watch Uncut Gems again because I remember loving that. It's too uh, tense. That's dog. another one. That's another that's, one, dude. I, that's one that I that was, was like, so "How fun. do you rewatch that movie? It's so anxiety." We, oh, it's so fun. We, uh, this I was the, happy this, the whole time. It was great. Yeah, that's wh- okay. You should maybe get yourself checked out. I think, uh, <laughs> like Emily, this is the thing too with Dan. Like he is un like. There's something in his brain, and I will. I'm sorry, Dan. I'm just gonna talk about you like you're not you here, are, but you're good to go. There's something in his brain where like he's unable unable to like achieve empathy 
for like things he Not sees movies. on no, screen. No, on, on as screen. a film major, as a as someone with a film degree, I know it's all fake. Did you know that? It's all fake. It, it didn't but that, like Tom that Hanks such didn't a die at the end of Private Ryan? Answer. I feel like I can just like I, I feel alert. absolutely no feelings like a documentary or something happening to someone in real life. I'm not incapable of empathy but, uh, by any means. It's movies or video games. It's like look, that dude in The Last of Us isn't real. That you know this guy in this <laughs> movie, the Uncut Gems, none of that happened. You know, I like, guess what? How, I would, why am I, I supposed to feel sad about something that didn't happen? Okay, so to counter, so, an art is supposed to evoke emotions yes, in you. That's the I point. Don't. Yes, I, I get, I get that. And like, if I watch The Rock or Face Off, I'm like, that's fucking cool. If that's cool as an emotion, then I get. I that. cry at The awesome. Rock, but not, I don't yeah, I cry. I've never cried in a movie. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but Emily's 100 percent right. Okay, to, what I would say to that is like, how are you able to like know if you're enjoying anything? Like, like if, if you I'm can't have something like if I watch Face Off and I've seen it like thirty times, I'm like I'm so fucking jazzed the entire time because it's so cool, right? dude. Yeah. Emily's face so is I am all feeling. I'm like I want to stand up and be like, oh fuck yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so like yes, right? I feel energized and I love movies. I fucking love them. I went to film school. It's I just I don't feel right? emotions that. other yeah. than fuck yeah when I'm watching one. It's frustrating. Not an emotion. It's just frustrating. <laughs> I mean, it, excitement, I guess, is what that is. Right? Fair enough. Sure. Fair enough. Okay. Look, documentaries the, will wreck me if it's like a, a documentary or some terrible shit happened. Holy shit. I've had documentaries I watched. I'll just like lay in bed. Just like, oh, God. Oh, oh man. Tiger King know. really fucked you up, did, huh? Did you see Summer of Soul? Did you see no. that documentary? Fantastic. No. Yeah. Incredible awesome. documentary. And I was weeping. Uh, really? I actually cry a lot and stuff. <laughs> I cry I do all the time. a lot. I cry a yeah. ton. Ticklebitch brought up the one that fucked me up, Dear Zachary. That's the one that, like, I was laying in bed just like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah, that one. Yeah, so if it's, but again, it has to be real. Otherwise, it's just like, yeah, that yeah. actor's walking around You should watch fine. Summer of Soul. I, that's a really great documentary. I, I don't know if, I mean, it's not my number one of the last 10 years, but it's a bright spot for sure. <laughs> Bison okay. Hero says Dan is 100% American. Uh, I just like that okay. comment. No, I didn't. Like 23 to me. I'm like all Belgian. <laughs> like a waffle. Uh, Cool. Yeah, you are a waffle, you Ooh. dumbass waffle. Uh, um. <laughs> do not check out China's Van Gogh because that is another documentary that will absolutely wreck you. Huh. Mm. Oh God, it's oh man, it's just yes, really most depressing. Of the documentaries I watch are about wrestling, and a lot of that's tragic too. So. Yeah, 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 all yeah, those yeah, are trash. Yeah. You're a is there a positive one? Mm. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, oh, this is a terrible person, or oh, this is a tragic story, or yeah, yeah. yeah Beyond the Mat's bad. fun. I mean, no, don't Young well, Rock is fine at times. Yeah, yeah. Young yeah. Rock is like a a documentary, right? I'm not gonna watch Young Rock. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you guys are looking for something that doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> all right, chat chose uh, the next one. They chose Fear. Hey, it's John from Virginia. When I was a kid, uh, after watching cartoons, I feel like. I had this fear of quicksand and getting stuck in quicksand or getting sunk in quicksand and dying, right? I, I There's got to be a lot of that stuff that, that we had as kids that we look at now and go like, yeah, quicksand wasn't as big of a problem in my life as I thought it was going to be. Uh, what fears did you have as a kid that you look back now and go like, yeah, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but it was definitely a warranted fear as a child. Love you all, bye. I think, I think that's a John off Laney of, bit. Yeah, I was going to say, I've heard that before. That <laughs> yeah, right. I'd say eating off of an unattended plate of Acme bird seed. I'm, I always pause before I do that. Oh, God. What? <laughs> Is that some, like, Looney Tunes bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> Emily. <laughs> eh, this guy, huh? Wiley Coyote! <laughs> that's the a runner. Runner. It's a classic! <laughs> Someone throw cherry tomatoes at this man because that's what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is a good Brilliant. prompt, though. It, 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 yeah, right? It is a good prompt, I think, uh, because, you know, uh, it sucks. It sucks because I, I live with a seven and a half year old and all of he his doesn't irrational... pay rent. That's why he it doesn't sucks. pay rent. He doesn't yeah. have a job. He's a, yeah. He, no, he's a good roommate. He just like, he just has good very irrational for rent. <laughs> well, look, he I cut him some slack. He just has to bring home Camper of the Year, uh Camper of the Day awards and that's payment enough for me, okay? Um he has a lot of irrational fears, right? Like him right now is just like the darkness is evil. Uh I'm you know, wherever it's dark, that's where a gremlin exists. Uh that's, you know, like uh 
he wakes up in the morning, he like goes down, he makes breakfast, he watches TV, he's completely independent. The second five o'clock rolls by, and I'm like, hey, go take a shower. He's like, yeah, but I might die. <laughs> <laughs> Something is waiting for me upstairs, and it's going to kill me. And I'm like, oh, you sweet little idiot. Uh, that's not what's going to happen. You know, he's such a sweet little boy. But I'm trying to think, the what what is something that like... Like monster underneath your bed, and then I realized yeah, I have like, a very you, low bed frame. Right. So there wasn't a lot right. of space. You just throw a grenade under there every time, every night. I mean, I wasn't scared of a monster under my bed, but my bed was up against a wall. I was a little bit scared of the dark. I had a nightlight till I was in middle school. Mm -hmm. Um... I was afraid of like facing the wall. Uh, I don't know if it was that I was, I didn't want my back to the room because then something could happen in the room sure. that I wouldn't see. But also I think I was concerned about like something coming up from the, like on the side of the wall from the, under the bed or something. Huh. I don't know why. Yeah. No, that that's was a fear I, that I had. That's super common. Like, um, I definitely had stuff like that. I had a thing where like, if one piece of my body was not covered, by a blanket that was somehow the thing that was just going to get chopped off by nothingness yeah. or grabbed right um it's weird because now like you know every like once a week he'll have a nightmare or whatever and he comes in but he comes in so soft and quiet and he opens <laughs> our door and then it's only until his like he's like nose to nose with you and he's like dad and, <laughs> and that is Jesus. that's fucking horrifying okay and i now i've i've started to develop a fear of like him coming in and right. being like, you know, yeah, like, startling. oh my god, he's gonna scare me, you know? Oh fuck! Do you do you have one, Dan? I mean, uh, again, the show's only ten minutes longer, but like, it's um, I we had a refrigerator catch on fire when I was like four years old, and I remember cool. it was a really chaotic thing. Cause it was like that's the pilot, the, oil. That's the pilot episode of the Rikers. <laughs> okay, so I was like four years <laughs> old or something, and it was in the basement, and the the kitchen or the the fridge caught on fire, and the fire like they had to come firemen and everything and spray it down and all that shit. And I guess I, I was so young. I don't remember a lot of this. My mom's told me about it. Um, I was really terrified about just like catching on fire in the middle of the night. And so I oh, wouldn't shit. be able to sleep. And I'd be like, mom, I'm going to catch on fire. Aww. And so she took me to the fire station when I was a little kid and, and had me talk to all the firemen and everything. And they explained to me that like, since I don't have any wires attached to me and I'm not plugged into anything, like I can't just catch on fire. And I remember they gave me like a little fireman teddy bear that I had for years. And like, I would sleep with the fireman teddy bear and I uh, got over it pretty quick. And then all these years later, you found a way to increase the chances of yourself catching on fire How? by trying to wake yourself up with a goddamn taser. I don't okay? think the taser was a fire hazard. I don't you I think that was safe. I think that was safe. That could absolutely start a fire. You could absolutely start a fire. I got tasers in the house. I'll go grab one right now. And no, I'll no, 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 no. It doesn't mean shit that you have them in the house. I just love the fact that, like, your fear of catching on fire. Decades later, you were like, "Yes, Emily, we'll, we'll get to your." Why question. do you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, but you, please, by all means, go ahead because you I have, have a tasers in the house. Yeah, I mean, just, I got a house. I got space now. Might as well fill it with tasers. <laughs> no, that's not an answer. <laughs> so well, I got uh, it in college. In college, I got my first taser and stun gun as like uh, a fun prank thing that we could bring to the bar and like bet each other if we like how long we could get tased and stuff. And so I got all sorts of like pictures and like there's a guy at the bar one who's like, oh, I'll do it on my tongue. And so like I got a picture of this guy going, ah, and I'm like, you can see like the electricity like hitting his tongue and stuff. So it was just a like dumbass college guy like, hey, let's see how long we can get tased for. And then I eventually started using it to wake myself up in the morning for a while, but that became untenable and um, I stopped <laughs> using that. So. <laughs> Um, I have a taser in my house because uh, I used to do a podcast or called Ghosts to Show You where we would uh, go out and look for ghosts. And one time we did a COVID episode where we were, me and my friend, who's also a you know petite lady, um, and we were going to be going around like a, a graveyard in the middle of the night. And I was like, you know, there's a lot of weirdos out there. So I bought a police strength taser. Yeah. Oh, for when we were ghost hunting in case anybody tried to fuck with us. Oh, I thought it was But now I have it. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I ghost. also... You know, you could try. <laughs> so definitive, so sure. So sure I that. really thought it was for the ghost. Has anyone tried? Hmm? tried? Has that Zach Baggins guy tried, you know? It's true. I guess the that Ghostbusters guy. were tasing ghosts. That's fair. They were more like stunning, stun locking right. them so they could like suck them into the, the little thing. Yeah. Makes you think. Yeah. It makes you think. <laughs> really? Um, anyway. It does suck that... though. Getting tased is not good. 
Yeah, I think I was directly obvious. before this podcast. I was hooked up to a bunch of electrodes here, and I was like pulsing electricity through my back. I've got to sit right next to me. I got a bunch of like wires and panels and stuff, and I was all hooked up. Like, Hope like, you don't catch on fire. Crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's a no, there's a non-zero chance. Just a heads up. <laughs> no, no. Uh, fuck. How did we even get here? I don't even remember. Was this the chat voicemail request? Was it fear? Did Emily? Did you yeah. pick one? I can't remember. Uh, I I have already picked two. Okay, the chat so, picked fear. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we'll end things with your. Oh God! Or don't hook yourself up. Don't this do the electric. spin thing now. Yeah. You oh. know you supposed to put it on your brain, your heart, or your nuts. I was hearing how to do it. The Holy Trinity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah. like we should maybe be doing a feature with that. We'll get that. We'll figure that out. Um, okay. We're going to pick one more voicemail. Emily, of course, is going to have the honors, and then we'll say goodbye. But uh, let's do it. Let's hear uh, your final choice, please. Okay. Very sorry to whoever doesn't get picked. Um, oh, Okay. Uh, scientific shit post. Okay. Look, look, look. Schrodinger's cat was a scientific shit post. Basically, it's all based on this thing where there's a particle, and uh, a lot of people think that when we try to look at this particle, it, it changes states based on whether we're looking at it, but that, that's not actually how it works. It's closer to how when you try to check the pressure on a tire, the act of measuring the tire pressure lets some air out of the tire. So technically, the tire is not in the same state as when you went to measure it. And a, a scientist got, like, really mad at people misinterpreting that as, oh, people are looking at it, so it knows it's being watched, man. And he's like, well, if, I, if we put a cat in a box and leave it there for a week, it, it's not really dead that we open the box, right? And, and it was all meant to be this, this satire, like, sarcastic shit post. That's all. Thank you, caller. Huh. I think I agree with that guy. I I don't I've never heard that. I don't know if that's true. I want to yeah, say that things can't. necessarily change just by the act of being observed. I don't know enough of science to say if it's true or not. It's definitive. We heard it on the internet. Someone called in. It's fact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't I I'm I'm looking at the Wikipedia part for Schrodinger's cat. And there's like a whole origin and motivation paragraph that I'm not going to read on air, but we'll check it out after. But if that's the I case, sure. That's... Schrodinger's an idiot. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's cool. That's very cool. Um, yeah. I like. It sucks that this can't just be a thing that we have a thought experiment on and like we all just go on with our lives. Like I feel like this thing's dominated the show for the last fucking month, four weeks. Yeah. Right. Like. What are we doing? Either way, just kill the cat is what we just, you know, that's it. Um, Emily. I once found a dead cat in a bag on my block. What? Ah, in a bag? Fine. In a that bag. sucks. Yeah. It's bleeding. Oh, dead. oh no. Oh, oh, sorry. no. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I know. That's such no. a we need a Jesus. palate cleanser. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm not going to have it end on this. You have to pick another voicemail. We'll just do that. Let's just do that. Let's okay. <laughs> clean, wash um, our hands of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, logos. No, do I get beans? To, do I Sorry. do I get beans? Guys, quick! I'm at the grocery store and I'm gonna make chili. Do, do I get beans? And should I use turkey or beef or bacon? Beef. Should I put oh. bacon in anyway? All right, thanks. No. Get back to me as soon as you can. Oh Before shit! Bacon, Thursday, beans, and beef. Whatever. Bacon, beans, and beef. Do that. Oh no, beans, my phone's yes. turned off. Beans, yes. Beef, yes. Bacon, no. Too oily, too greasy. Oh, that's like a good 80 point. to 20 ratio of cheese to other stuff. 80 to 20? 80 is so. the cheese? Yeah. What? That's, that's just cheese. I, know, yeah. I like it. Well, I mean, it's really cheesy chili, but that's how I like it. I Okay. No, you, that's honestly, insane... Dan, Dan, at some point, we just can't take your opinion. Like, we just can't take it seriously. I like, like what I like. I know what I like. Uh, I have, that's so, fair. It's fair. Yeah, look, Thank again, you. that's not, but you're not getting to contribute to the menu. Okay. We're just going to have to like start a restaurant and you'll come eat there and you'll be happy about it. I'll give you a, a discount. Sometimes I just hear that out of your mouth. Uh, <laughs> I feel like 
If you did 80% cheese, obviously we can't just do that. Here's uh, So I'm with you, Emily. If you add bacon in the cooking process, it will get oily and it'll be all fucked and it'll be like more oil and it'll, it'll be gross. If you add uh, fucking bacon at the end, like pre-cooked pre bacon, you might you might be able to get away with that. As well, well, little crumbles, yeah. To, like, little maybe crumble, it's unnecessary. Boys. Oh yeah, maybe some crumb. Okay, maybe yeah. a crumble. But I, th I'm, I mean, I, you know, I prefer sometimes turkey where beef might go. <laughs> Uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, but yeah. you know, where cows are too scared to tread. Yeah, I get it. High blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, right. Ready? Like you're doing chili already. You might as well get fucking gnarly with it. You know, get two types of beans. Get wild, buddy. Oh yeah, refried. That's the way to go. In chili? Not in chili. I don't chili. know. What's supposed to go? You need in... the texture. Yeah, dude. What? The whole bean. Dude, your menu is crazy. All right, we Good. have. To, I have to make this one day. I'm okay. the only one here from the Midwest. I know what's going on. Dan, you said eighty to that. twenty cheese to everything else. Eighty to twenty <laughs> cheese to everything else, and the everything else is just refried beans, beef, bacon, and hot sauce. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right, everybody. I love it. Like your whole thing is like, oh wait a minute, we just made another Taco Bell. What are we doing? <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. That's just that's just soup from Taco yeah. Bell. That's just yeah. like you pour, soup. pour it out yeah. of the queso machine and then throw in whatever's Please. left. Absolutely. Oh, okay. good job, Emily. Panic. Oh my gosh, this has been so great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Where where can people life. where can people follow you? Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at a pretty big mouth. And if you're in New York City. Or Brooklyn, rather. Um, on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, we're doing a two minutes to late night uh, Hard Melissa hating game. It's like the dating game, but with hate. I love it. Uh, for people who don't know, uh, Hard Melissa is a really awesome character that uh, Emily plays that uh, I thought was a real person for a while. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I watched some of those videos before I met Emily, and I was convinced that was a real person. Look, we yeah. all have our things, right? I'm just really good. I really disappear into the character. <laughs> I just, I was like, oh, that. I was like, oh, she's hardcore. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you again for being here. Uh, we'll have you back very soon. Hope to see you very soon. And that's gonna do it for us. Seven oh seven exit flu is the phone number. Leave us a voicemail because this is a time traveling voicemail show. Uh, Jan Ochoa, thank you very much. Dan Reichert, thank you very much. And we will be back next week with a brand new show. See you then. To... We're just gonna we're just gonna <laughs> raid somewhat. We're just gonna throw the chat into another